Spectrum Business Internet and Phone are built to meet the needs of your business. You need fast speeds to keep up with all the new ways you're interacting with customers. And we get that you need low prices to keep costs down. No business wants to be locked into a contract, so we don't have them. Choose Spectrum Business, the best internet and phone with fast starting speeds at a great low price, all without ever signing a contract. That's what you want and what your business needs. No nonsense, just business. Spectrum Business. It's just a big deal to me. I wanted this job. I w I've always wanted to be a head coach. I just have always wanted to be a head coach only here. And I'm so excited and humbled and thankful to be able to do it with my own personality and in my own shoes. And I'm ready to go. It doesn't happen very often here at North Carolina, but tonight a new era begins for the Tar Heels. It's actually been 18 years since the last one began. Tonight, Hubert Davis leads the Tar Heels as the head coach for the first time in Chapel Hill. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Dean E. Smith Center alongside former Tar Heel and national champion Marcus Ginyard. I'm Kyle Stroud. An exhibition is what we have on our hands tonight, but Tar Heel fans are really excited because it's the first time they get to see this team, not just under Hubert, but playing against a different uniform. You've been in that situation, Marcus. What's going through their heads? Just a lot of excitement. These players have been working this offseason individually and as a team to reach new goals, attack new challenges this season. So I think that you're just gonna see a lot of excitement out there to be here in front of the fans again. I just think they're gonna be ready to go. Some newcomers for the Tar Heels who we'll get to throughout the game, some transfers as well as some freshmen. But the big news for this opening game is that man right there, Hubert Davis, the 20th head coach for the North Carolina Tar Heels men's basketball program and just the fourth head coach who used to also wear the uniform and play as a Tar Heel. When you were here, he wasn't an assistant yet. He was still doing his ESPN stuff, but you've been around the program. You're back a lot. What are your thoughts of him taking over? I love it. I think it was a great hire. Huber was around when we were at practice and things like that, so it was great to have him around. Everybody knows what a, a, an amazing Tar Heel he is, and I think that he is going to be a great person to take charge of this program. Elizabeth City State, the Vikings, the opponent tonight for the Tar Heels. This is their second exhibition as they played NC State on Monday, but for them, some excitement around these exhibitions because it's been two years since they've played basketball, a Division II program who did not have a season last year. And when we talked with their head coach, Sean Walker, he was excited to get out there and play in this stadium. Well, I don't know who wouldn't be excited to play in the Dean Smith Center. This is a great place to play. See Dawson Garcia getting going. One of those newcomers that I mentioned, Dawson Garcia in the starting lineup tonight for Hubert Davis. And there was a lot of question marks about who was going to be a starter for the Tar Heels because there are those three transfers, a couple of big time freshmen. But it looks like Hubert going with more of a veteran lineup here, both the freshmen on the bench to start off. Well, I think we got a lot of great choices. Coach Davis has a lot of great choices in terms of who he wants to put out there on the floor. But I think that Dawson Garcia is going to be somebody that, that the Tar Heels are going to rely on, stretch the floor as we just saw. But to your point, just a veteran out there with experience. You know, one of the things that I think Huber probably was asked more than anything else since he took over the job was, what is Carolina basketball going to look like under you? And I think he gave the same answer every time. It's going to look like Carolina basketball. Exactly. It's going to be the same brand of basketball that, that we all know, getting into the paint getting uh, on the rebounds, pushing the tempo. Those things aren't going to change. Take a look at the starting five for the Vikings. Zach Hobbs, who's handling the ball right now, coach told us is the best scorer on this team. They need to find that second option, though. Well, we'll see what Elizabeth City can do. North Carolina is going to put a lot of pressure on them. It's not going to be easy to score the basketball. Hobbs pulls up for three. Tar Heels get the rebound. Caleb Love out in transition. Can't finish through contact, but he'll go to the free throw line. And that's the tempo that Coach Davis wants to see. 
get a stop on defense and attack in transition. Love the sophomore for the Tar Heels out of St. Louis, Missouri. You saw flashes last year of the hype that he had coming into Chapel Hill. Looking for a little bit more consistency from him this season. Well, I think that Caleb Love is going to be somebody that obviously the Tar Heels rely on out there on the court. But I'm excited to see what his mentality looks like as the season progresses. Somebody who knows that he has a chance to take a big step this season. I'm looking forward to it. Averaged 27 and a half minutes last year, 10 and a half points. Gabe Kirkendall bringing the ball across midcourt, leaves it off for Hobbs now. RJ Davis on the defense. Going to get an illegal screen call up top. That'll go against the big center, Samuel Zawoke me. We've seen already that the Tar Heels have Done a great job of putting some pressure on Elizabeth City State. These first two possessions, we got a bad, bad shot and a turnover. One of the keys for Sean uh, Walker, the head coach for the Vikings, was to limit the turnovers as Baycott goes back for the hoop. I can imagine that Coach Walker doesn't want to see alley -oop dunks either. Baycott led the Tar Heels in a number of categories last year, including points per game at 12.3. Now in his junior season, they expect some big things from the big man. Armando Baycott is another guy that really, I think, is going to be looking to take some major steps this season. Really trying to get into that elite category in college basketball. Shot down under five. Good team defense here from the Heels. Three-pointer on the corner is good for Kirkendall. First basket of the game for the Vikings. Davis with another hoop for Bob Baycott. Those are easy baskets. It's a great way to get going, great way to get a feel for the game. I know that Armando Baycott is excited about starting the game two for two, two dunks. One of the other categories Baycott led the team in last year was field goal percentage as Hobbs hits a straightaway three. Second triple early goings here for the Vikings. It's good to get those three-pointers going down. I don't love those shots. I don't think that they're the best shots for the team, but obviously going down always makes them good. Hard foul will send Love back to the line. Take a look at both of these oops. A little bit different. This one from the three-point line as Baycott was able to sneak in back door. The other one, the defense collapsing on Davis, though. Two great passes from North Carolina guards, R.J. Davis and Caleb Love. I think that's going to be a great connection throughout this season. Love, one of the better free throw shooters, not just for Carolina last year, but in the ACC, 80.8% .8 on the season. Two-time ACC freshman of the week last year, knocks them both down. Tied with Baycott early for the team lead with four. Hobbs working on Davis again here for the Vikings. Kirkendall picked up his dribble and is stuck on the baseline. Finally finds some help as Shaikeith Daniels comes to him. The senior out of Greenville. Here's a deep three for Hobbs, and he's not going to hit anything on that one. And again, we see that pressure from North Carolina, really forcing Elizabeth City State into some tough shots early in this game. I can imagine that we're going to see that type of pressure throughout the game. It's going to be tough for Elizabeth City. They're going to have to find a way to move the basketball and, and get better shots. We were here a couple of days ago for North Carolina's practice, and one of the things that really stuck out to me was they were talking about talking on the court and communicating on those switches. Can't hear it, but it appears Carolina talking pretty well early. Walton looking to go upstairs, but blocked by Shawanmi. Back the other way, go the Vikings. Now, although he wasn't able to convert that, I still like Walton attacking the basket. We all know him as a great three-point shooter, but just attacking that basket is going to be great for him, too. Shawan Mee picks up his second foul on the illegal screen. Carolina with the early five-point lead here in the Dean Dome. Okay, JV, good game. Gonna be on tonight? Yeah, definitely. Cool, see you later. Pass it, pass it! Yes! yes! You wanna play one more after this? Yeah, one more. Got him! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Oi! Keep it down! No! 
You keep it down! Sorry, neighbors. I can't stand mine either. Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. Alongside Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Straub. A couple of early threes for the Vikings has them still in this one at the under 16 as we take a look at their head coach, Sean Walker. The Vikings also like the Tar Heels, led by a former player as he's back in his second stint with the Vikings. Well, I love hearing what Coach Walker had to say about this game, trying to take this game four minutes at a time. We all know that he's got a tall task ahead of him playing against the North Carolina Tar Heels here in Chapel Hill, but I love that mindset of just taking it a little bit at a time. Changing things up here for that second four-minute stretch as they go to a zone out of the timeout. Kick out top of the three, R.J. Davis. Davis, the sophomore out of White Plains, New York, named one of the three captains on the season prior to the game tonight. That's going to be part of his leadership role, taking big shots, making big shots. Um, you know, he's going to be somebody that kind of anchors this these, this guard play for, for the Tar Heels. A couple of changes for North Carolina out of the timeout as well. Two transfers on the court, Brady Manick and Justin McCoy, and Manick going to come down with the rebound for the Tar Heels. Davis pushing it ahead. He'll pull up just inside the three-point line, and he'll go to the free throw line as he is fouled by Cy Fisher. You know, getting ready for this game, you look for little nuggets, and I found a really good one, especially because you're doing the game with me here tonight. Last year, Davis, as a true freshman, started his very first game that he played as a Carolina Tar Heel. He's just the fourth two guard who has ever done that here at Carolina. Wayne Ellington, Justin Jackson, and yourself, Marcus Guignard. How about that? Didn't, you didn't even know that when I, I told the pregame. I didn't know that. <laughs> Davis can't hit the second of two. Elizabeth City State gets the rebound. Vikings working it around the perimeter. They want to play an inside out kind of a game, but Coach Walker told us, hey, we're going to be mismatched in terms of the paint. So we may not be able to play exactly like we want to as they're one and done. Davis up the court quickly again, looking for the bounce pass back for Manic with the reverse. I love RJ Davis's vision. Obviously, you got a great player in Brady Manic as well, who knows how to play the game. Great cutback door, great vision, great finish. Davis came to Carolina last year with more of a reputation as an off-the-ball guard, but Asked to handle the ball, and especially this year, going to be asked to handle it a lot. And that's one thing about great players. They're able to adapt, able to do the things that, that the team needs them to do. Daniels off the mark. They caught with the rebound. Davis going to get the foul call against Elizabeth City State. Defender didn't get their feet there in time. That was Gabe Kirkendall. The speed in which our day Davis is getting up the court is wreaking havoc right now. Absolutely. It all starts with that tempo. When you push the ball like that, you're just putting a ton of pressure on the defense to, to get in place, to make plays, to communicate like we talked about. That's not easy to do. Carolina currently on an 8-0 run. Been almost three minutes since the Vikings have scored. with that zone defense. Good ball movement from the Tar Heels. Manic looking for three in and out. Tipped by Garcia. McCoy picks it up. He's going to be blocked though by Wilkins. Back the other way they go. Fisher going to pull up and leave that one short. One-handed rebound for Garcia. Davis tried to get that one through some traffic, but Hobbs able to get a foot on it. I think it's very clear early in this game that North Carolina is just on another level in terms of their tempo. I know that Sean Walker wants to play fast without turning the ball over, but right now it looks like North Carolina is really controlling that tempo. With both Davis and Love on the court right now, are you surprised that Davis is the primary ball handler at all? 
I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how these two are going to play off of each other throughout this season. I think it's great to have them both on the floor. Fisher able to kick out to a wide open Michael Wright, and he'll knock down the three. Third triple of the game for the Vikings. If Elizabeth City State can continue to knock down the three ball, they'll have a chance to, to hang around. They struggled with that in the game against the Wolfpack on Monday, shooting just 25% from beyond the arc, but really played well in the paint. Actually out-rebounded the Wolfpack in that one, 38 to 35. One of the keys, though, that Coach Walker told us was they got to stay away from the turnover. 27 times they caught the ball up. And he's looking for a ball hander besides Hobbs, who shows the handle and goes left hand. Great move by Hobbs, getting into the paint, scoring at the basket. That might have been their first points at the basket. Nearly another turnover forced by the defense for the Vikings. And here we see Hobbs, great behind the back, and great finish, great left-handed finish. First team all CIAA preseason. Didn't get a chance to play at all last year, but that was probably a good thing for Hobbs. Coach Walker told us a couple of years ago, he actually broke his leg in a game and it took him almost two full years to recover. It's always tough coming back after injury. So I'm sure, like you said, he definitely benefited from having that year. Love finds Garcia in the corner, and he's got his second triple. The transfer from Marquette lit it up from beyond the arc last year when they visited the Tar Heels, and he actually led them to a victory over North Carolina, now wearing Carolina blue. Right with back another three himself. Looks like we might have a little three-point shootout here tonight. Seven made threes between the two teams. And that is going to send us to the TV timeout. At Ring, we've reinvented the doorbell, and now we're reinventing home security with Ring Alarm. It's the simplest, fully customizing, easy installing, home protecting, monitor everything, camera watching, flood sensing, frozen pipe alerting, smoke detecting, door locking, Alexa integrating, panic diverting, crime deterring, professional monitoring, first responding, hey. security system that we've ever invented. Protect your home with Ring Alarm. Shop holiday deals this season at ring.com. Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. Dawson Garcia, last year a Big East All-Freshman Team member Shot just over 35% from three-point land. Two for two so far here tonight for the Tar Heels. I know that all the Tar Heel fans and Hubert Davis are super excited to see him get going early. A guy that can stretch the floor. Uh, obviously, a big body can also score in a, in a multiple ways inside as well. That's going to be great, especially against the zone defense that they're seeing tonight. 6'11", 235-pound sophomore. You see their teammates with Kerwin Walton as AAU players. and. Had to have helped his decision to come to Carolina. Familiar face, an old teammate. I can imagine it did. And it's always nice to have that, that relationship that's already established in a place that's going to be new for you. So I'm sure that that was a big, big point for him in choosing North Carolina. Speaking of familiarity, Justin McCoy, one of those three transfers for the Tar Heels, actually kind of a local guy from North Carolina, actually from Raleigh to be specific. Played his first couple of years at Virginia. Started four of 19 games that he played in last year for the Cavaliers. Knocks down both the free throws. Nicky Black will check in for him. Nice ovation from the Tar Heel crowd for the senior Black. Carolina fans always seem to have a little extra love for those guys that stick around all four. Absolutely. I think that that's one thing that Carolina fans really love. Somebody that's going to stay here all four years, grow throughout the program. And, and really try to put this this program in, in a good place. 19 blocks last year for the Sumer uh, for the Sooners. Manic comes up with one here. 
a great show of his size. Somebody that's going to be able to impact the game on, on offense and defensive end. Alongside Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Straub. Appreciate you joining us here on ACC Network Extra for this exhibition, the last tune-up for both of these teams before they start their regular season play. Vikings a little trouble inbounding that one. Finally, get it to Michael Wright. He's got a couple of threes on the game. Hands it off for Fisher. Hobbs, the fifth-year senior. Nice little move behind the back from the elbow, knocks it down. Another great move by Zach Hobbs. I know that they're scoring the basketball, but it just seems like the way that they score just is a little more difficult. And we'll see if that wears them down throughout the game. Wilkins with a block. Vikings have made four of their last five shots after the Tar Heels had gone on an 8-0 run themselves. Fisher, the 6-2 junior out of New Orleans. Goes up through two Tar Heels, offensive rebound and put back. He is going to find its way home. Bellotti with his first bucket. That's going to be a way that Elizabeth City State can just hang in this game, making threes, getting second chance points. See, it can't get the tip in. Bellotti just 6'4", but Coach Walker told us he may be undersized. He doesn't care, though. He's tough and he can jump out of the gym. Fisher misses the open three. They didn't convert that, but they got another offensive rebound. Again, if they're going to have multiple chances to score the basketball, they'll put themselves in a good position. Again, it was Bellotti coming down with that offensive board. 10-9, the rebound battle in favor of Carolina as Baycock comes back out on the floor. Had a good spell to start the game. A couple of alley-oops, a couple of rebounds for Carolina. The primary ball handler again. Black cross-court pass to Walton. Manic can shoot the three, but he's also got some post-up moves, and he shows it off there. Definitely. Another guy that can score in a, a variety of different ways. Obviously, somebody with a, a great deal of experience, somebody who's not going to get rattled down there. Unlike Garcia and McCoy, a grad transfer, so just the only year that Manic will have here in Chapel Hill. Hobbs comes off the screen, has the three rattle out. Black with the rebound. Leaky pushing. Back down to Baycock, couple of pump fakes, can't get it to go. Good defense there by Wilkins. Leaky with one rebound, and the second is going to draw a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Take a look at Manic down low on the block. Talk a lot about the big because he can shoot. But if you're a big, you got to be able to play in the paint. Absolutely. He shows great touch. And again, just poised, patient, made his move. Nice touch inside. Leakey is 69.2% free throw shooter last year for the Tar Heels. Senior out of Concord, North Carolina. Got his nickname Leaky from his grandma. His middle name is Malik, and Graham started calling him Leaky, and it stuck. I think those family nicknames are always great. Perfect two for two for Leaky Black. Elizabeth City shooting just over 41% so far in this first half. Short coach Walker has got to be happy. They've only turned the ball over four times, and that was really his biggest point of emphasis, was taking care of the ball when they had it. Hobbs with a pull-up three. Manic got a piece of that one. Bellotti chases it down, battled with Black. The shot clock going to go off, and it'll be Carolina possession. And now Elizabeth City State hasn't turned the ball over that much, but again, they've had a tough time getting high-quality shots. And I think that throughout the course of this game, that's going to show more and more. Eight point lead for the Tar Heels. RJ Davis back in and handling the ball. Love, Manic, Black, and Baycott out there for the Tar Heels. Hobbs, Pilati, Wright, Dudu, and Kirkendall for the Vikings. Manic looking to go baseline. 
Got his defender in the air, and he's going to draw the foul. Another great example. Taking his time, making a great pump fake, getting the foul, going to the line for an easy two. 6'9", Manic going against the 6'4", Bilotti. He used his size there to his advantage. His size and his brains. Got Bilotti up in the air, out of position. Take a foul and two points. Not just a good basketball player, but graduated in just three and a half years. Only needed seven semesters to get his degree from Oklahoma. I was on the opposite side of that. It took me five years to get out of here. <laughs> I'm still looking for mine. Don't worry. <laughs> Baycott with the offensive rebound on the miss. Kicks it out. Love for three off the front iron. Manic with the putback. And we talked about what kind of brand of basketball we may see from North Carolina, and, and that's it. Attacking the glass, second chance points. That's something that we're going to see from the Tar Heels throughout this season, I can imagine. Brady Manick with a team high, seven points for North Carolina. Zach Cobbs, who has the ball here for Elizabeth City, team high, seven points for the Vikings. Pump fake. He puts it on the ground, and Big Cobb swats it away. Carolina with their biggest lead of the game. It stands at 11. The defense playing pretty well right now for the Tar Heels as Baycott sends this one a couple of rows deep. Millions of fantasy football players need to be confident they're making the right decisions. What's up with CeeDee Lamb? By analyzing everything from player stats to expert opinions, Watson cuts through the noise to deliver game-changing insights. Boomer Bust says C.D. Lamb is good. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. Alongside Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Stroud. Even though it's an exhibition, Carolina fans excited to be able to get back into the Simmons Center as we take a look at their schedule where the regular season will actually begin. And that is on Tuesday as they will have Loyola in town, then Brown. You see the end of November. They've got some tough games coming up. I think that this time for the University of North Carolina is going to be a time that's very important for them to kind of get in the groove and get ready for some of these bigger, bigger teams that they have at the end of November. Those games against Purdue and then either Tennessee or Villanova will be up in Connecticut at Mohegan Sun, part of the Basketball Hall of Fame tip-off tournament. Hobbs into the paint, runs into Baycott, but will draw the foul. Hobbs will go to the free throw line. This will be the first time that Elizabeth City has gone to the charity stripe here tonight. I think that Elizabeth City is really having a tough time moving the ball, getting in a groove. However, I love Zach Hobbs and his energy right now, attacking the basket, making big shots. If he can sustain that throughout this game, they may have a chance to hang around. 5'11", fifth-year senior out of Maysville, North Carolina. This is the second. Foul goes against the Vikings, and back to the other side of the court we go. They got... Should I keep Daniels, the senior, on that one? Tenth foul, that'll give Carolina the automatic free throws. Who made one of two last time to the, uh, the free throw line. Averaged just under 11 points a game last year for Oklahoma. Helped to get them into the NCAA tournament. Won their first round matchup. Here's the second one a little bit short. And that'll last be touched by a Tar Heel. Second time here in this first half that Elizabeth City has gone for three minutes without a field goal. 
Hobbs looks for the screen from Dudu. Kirkendall all the way around the baseline. Hobbs open for three off the front iron, just a little bit short, but the offensive rebound by Kirkendall. And again, second chance opportunities. They didn't convert, but that's something that'll help keep them hanging around this North Carolina team. A steal and a breakout. DeAndre Barrett, sophomore out of the Bronx. Steals and dunks will keep you around too. Just the third Tar Heel turnover as RJ Barrett gets to the bucket. Can't finish the finger roll, but Baycott there to clean it up. Nine offensive rebounds now for North Carolina in the game. Yeah, in typical North Carolina basketball. Really crashing the boards, putting that pressure on that defense. Going to get love on the foul. That's on the floor. First foul against Caleb. Seven of the eight Tar Heels who have entered the game have scored so far. It's a nice even distribution, something I'm sure first year head coach Hubert Davis will like. Absolutely. I think everybody on the team likes that as well. Everybody feels like they're involved. Everybody's contributing. I think that that just really helps for your, for your chemistry, even on the other side of the ball. Fisher, Daniels, Kirkendall, Wilkins, Barrett out there for the Vikings. Black, Love, Davis, Baycott, and Garcia as Caleb Love quickly picks up his second personal foul. Another one on the floor. Correction, they actually got Garcia on that one. Junior Cy Fisher. Coach Walker told us joking around, he said he's built like a linebacker. Maybe Mac Brown will recruit him and put him out there. Nice little spin move and finishes with a nifty finger roll. Well, he was able to get himself inside and, and score, like you said, on that nice finger roll. The two made threes that Garcia already had in the game helped him to get that drive there as the defender left his feet and he'll go to the free throw line. Take a look at Fisher here again. Nice move in the paint to get some separation from the much bigger Garcia. Well, you know, one thing that, that, that Coach Davis has talked about in this preseason is, is really believing in his bigs to guard guards when they switch. Uh, this is an example right here where Cy Fisher got the best of, of Dawson Garcia, but you got to give him credit. It was a great move. Garcia good for just over 78% from the free throw line last year with Marquette. Hits both here. Gives him eight in the game. It's a team high for the Tar Heels. Fisher guarded by Love. Double high screen ran by the Vikings there. Carolina able to get through it. Wright gives it up for Daniels, and a reverse is good for Daniels. Nice finish by Daniels there, up and under. Fell after that, trailed the play, and because of it, able to come up with the steal. Barrett trying to go cross court. That was a great, great play. Score, sprint back on defense, and get a steal. That's the type of energy that I'm sure Sean Walker loves to see from his team. Viking offense has run hot and cold here in the first half. A couple of three-minute stints without field goals, but currently three for three on their last three possessions. Missed that one. Leaky Black comes down with the rebound and pushes forward. Love thought about the three, passes it up, and Carolina will settle into the half-court offense. Davis going to take a deep three off the mark. Well, that's a time where I think that I'd like to see R.J. Davis make a better decision. Had a couple of possessions that didn't go so well for North Carolina. A three in that in that situation may not have been the shot that, that Coach Davis wanted. Tar Heels three of nine from three-pointer here tonight. The 
Hurt with a little stop and go, kicks it out as the defense collapse, right a little bit long on the three. Love with a hesitation into some traffic, can't finish through contact, no whistle, and the Vikings push the ball up the court. Pushing the tempo like Caleb Love did just then, that's something that obviously Coach Davis wants, but we also have to couple that with decision making. Taking on maybe one or two guys in, in the paint there, might have been a better situation to pull that out and, and get into the offense. They actually issued a flop warning on Love on that play. Take another look at it here. Some contact. And to be fair, Caleb Love is a big guard that can finish in traffic. Can imagine that that's one that he won't miss too often. Carolina almost three minutes without a bucket, but. The Vikings really haven't been able to chip into that lead. It's been as big as 11 for the Tar Heels. Burton stands at nine. Walton on the court for the Tar Heels. Right for three. Wright is definitely getting into a groove. Already his third three in the first half. Three of four from beyond the arc. Baycott draws a double team, spins away from it, and finishes with a nice touch. Getting back to the bigs here at North Carolina. Obviously, Coach Davis is going to want them to score in the paint. Plays like that, taking your time and showing some of that touch around the basket. Hobbs with eight points, drives, gets tied up by Barrett and taken away by Carolina. And then a foul committed by Brandon Bellotti trying to knock it away from Armando. The three's falling though for Michael Wright. He's got three in this first half. Come in for ingredients. Leave with more to pass down. Okay, JV, good game. You gonna be on tonight? Yeah, definitely. Cool, see you later. Pass it, pass it! Yes! yes. Ah. You wanna play one more after this? Yeah, one more. Got him! Yeah! <laughs> Oi! Keep it down! No, you keep it down! Sorry, neighbors. I can't stand mine either. Alongside Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Straub. Thanks for joining us here on ACC Network Extra, an exhibition between Elizabeth City State and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Take a look at Armando Baycott, who after his first couple of years, Marcus, went and tested out the NBA waters, was told what he needed to improve on if he wanted to take his game to the next level. You see the growth from year one to year two. What do you expect here in his third season? Well, I certainly would love to see him take a step like he did from year one to year two. But I think that Armando Baycott has an understanding that, that he has to improve on some things. I know one thing that he's thinking about is kind of uh, stepping out and, and extending his game. But I just think that he needs to continue to, to grow into being a force inside, first and foremost. 66% free throw shooter last year. Hits both of them here. Pushes the lead back to 10 for the Tar Heels. Walton Garcia, Baycott, Davis. And love out there for North Carolina. Hobbs, Bilotti, Fisher, Wright, and Dudu for the Vikings. Fisher will reset the offense. Under 10 to go on the clock. Walton on the D. Tried to lob that one in. RJ Davis takes it away. Caleb Love out in transition. Good D though by Bilotti. Garcia gets the offensive rebound. Love off the mark in the corner. Gets his own rebound. Lob for Baycott, who will finish. 
Baycott is living off these alley-oops tonight. And again, easy points inside. I'm sure he's not complaining. 23 rebounds in the game for the Tar Heels. 11 of them coming on the offensive glass. Going to get a goaltending call there. Dudu, just the freshman out of Cape Coast, Ghana. One of the players that Coach Walker told us he's got to bring along a little bit, but he needs him to really have an impact on the team if they want to accomplish their goals this season. He's definitely some guy, a guy that we have seen with a lot of energy out there on the court this evening. That's always a great place to start. Can't coach energy. Manic working against Dudu and a little bit too aggressive from the graduate transfer. He gets called for the offensive foul. Not sure about that. Honestly, it looked like the first bump was Might a little bit more. more of an offensive than the second one. You could see that arm extend just a little. I don't want to talk too much about the referees here. I've heard that I could still get fined for <laughs> talking about the refs, but just one of those plays you got to get through and, and try to adapt. The team's looking to finish this first half off strong. Lottie into the paint, forced to kick it out. Hobbs trying to take Love off the dribble. Not able to do so. First Garcia, then Walton, and here comes Carolina. Good ball movement from the Tar Heels. Walton spot up. And again, that is North Carolina basketball. Defend, rebound, tempo, and transition. Open threes. Walton, who as a freshman last year, set the UNC record for three-point field goal percentage, shot 42% uh, from beyond the arc. Mm. He will be, along with Brady Manick, Dawson Garcia, R.J. Davis, they will be relied on heavily to make those shots from beyond the arc this season. If he can repeat the performance of last year and even be a little bit better, Head coach for the Tar Heels, Hubert Davis, may have a record that he has held for a long time be in jeopardy as he's got the all-time three-point field goal percentage here at North Carolina. 43.5% during his playing days. One of the best shooters in the NBA as well. Manic for three, a little bit hard off the back iron. Good job boxing out by Elizabeth City as they get the rebound. About a two second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. 13 is the biggest lead of the game for the Tar Heels. Hobbs with the ball, love on the defense. Got a mid range jumper. Offensive rebound by Bellotti, kicks it out. At the buzzer, Barrett buries it. Second bucket of the first half for Barrett. Thoughts on the first half, Marcus? Well, I think that if Elizabeth City State wants to continue to have any chance to stick around with the Tar Heels, they're going to want to limit their turnovers like Coach said. And I think that they're doing a great job of getting these second chance opportunities. That's something that's going to allow them, you know, just an opportunity to, to put more points on the board. The bigs for North Carolina are putting in work. 12 for Baycott, 8 for Manic and Garcia both. And it's been the oops for Armando here in the first half. We'll be back with stats and highlights. I got these two great tennis players. All we need is a club. Nobody's taking that bet. Venus and Serena gonna shake up this world. What do you want out of this? I want to win the whole thing as many times as anyone's ever won it. You gonna show them how dangerous you are? Will Smith is King Richard. Rated PG-13 in theaters and on HBO Max November 19th. 
The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. Time here in the Smith Center and all smiles as Hubert Davis leading the Tar Heels as the head coach for the first time. The bigs have been doing the work for the Tar Heels. Hobbs trying to keep his team in it as we step aside. We'll be right back here in Chapel Hill. Are you looking for a new career with real growth potential? Spectrum is hiring. Whether you're looking to help customers, share knowledge, make connections, or enjoy uncapped earning potential, we have a role for you. So if you're ready to start a career with a company that offers comprehensive benefits, 401k, and complimentary services, visit jobs.spectrum.com today. What the holidays give is meant to be shared. It's the new traditions that lift us up and the way our celebrations are prepared. It's making room for all so that our world doesn't feel so small. It's when moments of light bring us closer than before and illuminate those we do it for. What we value most shouldn't cost more. time here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Final tune-up for both the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Elizabeth City State Vikings before the regular season tips off next week. Appreciate you joining us here tonight alongside former Tar Heel and always a national champion when you win one, Marcus Ginyard. I'm Kyle Straub. Appreciate you joining us, as I said, here on ACC Network Extra. The bigs have been doing the scoring, Marcus. But with Carolina basketball, the guard play is really where the offense is predicated from. What have you seen tonight? Stood out so far in this game is just the tempo. R.J. Davis and Caleb Love have done a great job of pushing the tempo. They haven't necessarily done a phenomenal job of scoring, but just pushing that tempo and creating opportunities for their teammates. R.J. Davis especially has gotten the ball up court really quickly to get that offense going for North Carolina. And besides that, you've got Kerwin Walton also knocking down a three, which is really what he does for North Carolina offensively. But just look at what we talk about with the guards facilitating here. Exactly. And one of the things that we're going to see from R.J. Davis is knocking down these threes. Caleb hasn't had a, a, a great showing at, on the three-point line tonight, but again, Kerwin Walker gets in there and, and knocks it down. All movement on the perimeter for the Tar Heels working as well. Take a look at what this trio has done last season. All of them were freshmen, so they all kind of were thrown into the fire all together, but now hopefully making that next step as sophomores. I think that all three of these guys are really going to be thinking about that. Like you said, making the next step, taking their game to the next level, taking this team to the next level, uh, and really trying to find some big time success. Going in, you're still a, a young player as a sophomore. How do you take that next step, be aggressive, but also understand to pull it back a little bit? It's going to be a little trial and error, and I think that uh, a lot of that is going to weigh pretty heavily on Coach Davis and, and being somebody that can really help mold these players. But they're going to have to get out there, try some things, and maybe some things won't work, but that's really the only way to, to do it. Star Heels with an 11-point lead here in the exhibition. 33% from beyond the arc for North Carolina in the first half. We'll step aside and come back here. One more segment before we get some more basketball inside the Smith Center. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. We need a team to contain this. If Raccoon City falls, who knows what's next? Go, go! A rocket launcher? Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Exclusively in movie theaters, November 24th. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York life has been helping people act okay. on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, 
We got it right. We did good. Alongside Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Straub. Final tune-up for both Elizabeth City and the North Carolina Tar Heels before they start their regular season next week. And a couple of the question marks coming into this one for the North Carolina side, Marcus, were the newcomers. A couple of freshmen, three transfers. How are they going to have an impact on the game? Well, the three transfers for the Tar Heels, 18 points, 10 rebounds. And you see those two field goals for Garcia. Both of them, he has knocked down corner threes. Well, I think that... All the Tar Heel fans out there, and especially Coach Davis, is super excited to have these transfers in uh, Carolina Blue this season. They're going to do a phenomenal job of, of really bringing a lot of experience with Brady, even with Justin McCoy, and just some young, fresh energy with, with Garcia. Uh, I think that they got nothing but upside for all three of them. I know with a freshman, you got a lot to learn, plus you're trying to get to know your teammates. Do you think it makes it easier for somebody who has played already at the college level to transfer in and, and more just worry about gelling within the team. Absolutely. There's no question that, that Brady Manick brings a, a different vibe when he comes in as somebody who's been there, kind of done that. And, and even Dawson Garcia, you know, he got some big time minutes as a freshman and, and had some big time games. Um, so I think that that's, you know, going to be huge for them. Just like you said, really focusing on kind of how they fit into this team and not so much how to play on the big stage. Hubert, the first-year head coach for North Carolina, brings in a couple of big-time freshmen, which, you know, that's going to be college basketball. But now with the transfer portal, going and finding those talent around the country that are looking for a new home, seems like he has hit a, a home run here with these three. Well, I certainly know that it's a lot easier to, to recruit with Carolina Blue and, and <laughs> uh, you know, the Smith Center and, and all the things North Carolina basketball. But uh, Coach Davis is going to do an incredible job uh, moving forward with recruiting. There's no question about that. I think the, the thing that's most interesting to me is two of those three are familiar with Carolina. Garcia played with Marquette here last year. McCoy, a transfer from Virginia, obviously some familiarity being in the ACC. It'd be interesting over the years just to see how the transfer portal affects things and how that goes with, you know, a school? Are you more comfortable going there versus traveling into a different conference? It's unknown territory. This is something that's new for uh, you know, everybody, a lot of different programs, and, and a lot of coaches are trying to find their way with this thing. On the floor for the Vikings to start this second half. Shawanmi, he's going to take the turnaround a little bit short. He got the start for the Vikings, but picked up two early fouls and had to sit out the remainder of that first half. And again, even to start the second half, probably not the shot that that Coach Sean Walker wanted to see from his team. Garcia left that one a little bit short. Tar Heels shot 38.7% from the floor in that first half compared to 40.5% for Elizabeth City. Vikings also won the turnover battle, which was a huge point of emphasis for Sean Walker, the head coach for the Vikings. Buffed it up seven times compared to the Tar Heels 11. Coach has got to be excited though. 27 turnovers in their last game and to only have seven at halftime. Looks like they're in a pretty good spot. They're just going to get the loose ball rebound underneath the basket. Up court quickly. Slows up in transition. And finishes with the right. You know, to be honest, I didn't know that that was going to be the best play for him, but he took his time, was patient. Attacked the basket and was able to finish at the rim. Hobbs handling for the Vikings. Daniels, Shawanmi, Kirkendall, Wilkins out there for Elizabeth City State. Black can't control that rebound. Flailing will commit the foul. Take another look at this little hesitation here from R.J. Davis. You think as a freshman, he just takes it to the hoop versus sophomore year, having that knowledge of slowing things up a little? Change of pace. You know, for any guard, that's going to be a big, big emphasis, change of pace. And I think that that was a perfect example there of, you know, that patience and, and really changing that speed, allowing him to get to the basket. One of the things that's not talked about as much from the freshman to the sophomore year, you saw him a little flex there at the end, finishing through contact. 
getting in the weight room. Carolina's got a pretty good weight training program here. Put on some weight in the offseason. Yeah, big shout out to Jonas Duration. He does a phenomenal job of helping these athletes get into the best shape that they can get into. I have heard stories. I don't know what it's called, but he makes you all play some game when you were on the team, and they still do it with Danny a... Danny Ball. What is it? Danny Ball. It's a, it's a big medicine ball that you have to throw over a volleyball net, right? Exactly. Seems kind of crazy, which it is, <laughs> but um, it's a great way to, to get our bodies in shape. Black Love, Davis, Baycott, and Garcia out there for Coach Davis to start the second half. Shot clock under 10 for the Vikings. Black picks up Hobbs on the switch into the paint. Not going to finish. Leaky with a head up in transition. Nice bounce pass to Garcia. Again, those are the essential North Carolina basketball plays. Big time defensive stop, rebound, and getting out in transition. Two points, one assist, six rebounds for Leaky Black in 10 minutes of play. Shalomni dribbles that one off his feet. Take a look at the court vision here from Leaky Black after he gets this rebound. Head up immediately. Everybody for Carolina running in transition. Transition baskets were something that Carolina really didn't have a lot of last year as Lug finds Baycott under the basket with a nice little bounce pass. Garcia gets fouled on the putback and he'll go to the free throw line. I love Armando Baycott using that left hand. Didn't quite go, but again, North Carolina crashing the glass, getting second chance opportunities. Tar Heels dominated the offensive glass in the first half with 11 at their first here of the second half. Perfect three for three from the free throw line so far tonight. Second Tar Heel into double digit scoring with 11. Make it 12 as he gets the shooter's bounce. Vikings looking for some offense. It's been a struggle here the first three minutes of this second half. Wright, who had three threes in the first half, has it taken away by Love. Saves it from going out of bounds. Kicks out to Davis, who steps on the sideline, and that will go to the Vikings. Well, Kyle, that's one of the mistakes that I'm sure Coach Davis doesn't love, but he can still live with. These guys are trying to push the pace of the game. We're trying to make plays. We've got to be more aware of the sidelines, but not the worst mistake. Fisher brings it across half court. Two points in 12 minutes. A couple of assists for him in the first half. Player that Coach Walker told us he'd prefer to have off the ball, but they need ball handlers and going to be forced to play point guard a lot as Hobbs gets to the hoop but can't finish. Good defense from Love. Baycock comes down with the loose ball. Okay, Love does a great job of using his size to be a force on defense. Good ball movement. Carolina finds Garcia for the two-hand slam. And He's got a team high 14 now. Exactly. And showing the way that he can score inside and out. Davis with some pressure. Up near half court, nearly took it away from Fisher. Carolina is rolling here in the second half, their biggest lead so far. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York life has been helping people act on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good.
after going all but just a couple of games last year with no fans here in the Smith Center, and even then, a limited capacity for the last few. First opportunity to fans to get into this stadium and make some noise, and they have been excited. They were excited when we were here for late night. Now they're getting to see a game, Marcus. I mean, this is an exciting time for everybody involved, coaches, players, fans, everybody. This place is obviously much more electric with the fans here. So I just think that, you know, they're just going to have a, a great time tonight getting a feel for what it's like for this place to be almost full. Out of the Vikings timeout, Hops, Fisher, Daniels, Gibson, and Shawami out there for Elizabeth City State. Pick to finish eighth in the CIAA this year. And that's going to be a foul underneath. Going to get that one on Baycott. And it'll send us to the under 16 timeout from one break to another here in Chapel Hill. Today, you have to manage expectations and lower wait times. With IBM, you can do both. Unifying apps and data across clouds helps you predict and manage supply chain issues for your business and for your customers. No one has faster internet speeds than Spectrum Business. We're built for the new way you do business. The extra online orders you're making, the way your customers are using Wi-Fi when they come in, the increase in to-go orders you're dishing out. We get it. Small businesses are working harder and smarter than ever. And with speeds all the way up to a gigabit per second and over 99.9% .9 network reliability, Spectrum Business is the best internet to keep your business up to speed. No nonsense, just business. Spectrum Business. Sophomore transfer originally from Fire Lake, Minnesota, Dawson Garcia. Showing fans exactly what he showed them last year when he was here with Marquette, leading the team so far with 14 points. He's just doing a great job of leaving his imprint on this game. See him finishing strong inside, scoring from the outside, doing all the things that everybody's going to expect from him throughout this season. Five rebounds, four of them offensive for Garcia. He's done that in 18 minutes, plus six so far tonight for Carolina. Referee's trying to sort some things out. an explanation there from one of the referees. A, fl a flagrant one is what ended up being called. There was some confusion kind of going into that break as far as who the foul was on, what the foul was. Baycott going to the floor. They went and looked at it in the break and ended up hitting Shawanmi with the flagrant one. So Baycott will take the, the shot. Does not get the home court bounce there as it rattles in and out. Second time in the free throw line for Baycott was two for two prior. Take another look at that foul. See what the referees saw. Originally, it was a foul on Baycott. They saw the hand, and then I think it's that elbow that Shawanmi got up that sent Baycott to the floor. Looks like that extension of that arm is kind of what got him in trouble there. Carolina gets the shot and possession. 20-point lead is the biggest of the game for the Tar Heels. Back to a zone here for the Vikings. They did that a little bit in the first half, coming out of the under-16 timeout. Shot clock under 10 for the Tar Heels. Deep three for Caleb Love. Last year, Marcus, he only shot a little better than 26% from three. But there were a couple of games, especially that Duke game in Cameron Indoor, where he lit it up from beyond the arc. Well, honestly, all of his shots tonight have looked very good to me. That shot, obviously, pure, didn't hesitate. Uh, I think he's shooting with confidence. So maybe he didn't get him to go down early in this game, but I think that he's shooting with a high level of confidence. Black looking for the long pass up court for Love, but Hobbs able to get a piece of it. 
in that game at Duke last year for Love. Four made threes and a season high 25 points to help the Tar Heels in a win over their rival. I think that was one of those games that really gave Caleb Love an idea of kind of how he can step onto that national stage and be an elite guard in college basketball. Anthony Harris checks into the game for the first time for North Carolina. Harris, a redshirt sophomore out of Woodbridge, Virginia. Manick with a corner three. Not to go. Best Missed shooting big three. in the country. <laughs> Missed his first three, but when you make your shots, you keep on shooting as a shooter, and he finally gets one to fall. Well, that's it, shoot or shoot. Nice entry pass there. Wilkins can't finish, though. Love trying to get it to Baycott. A little too much traffic that he tried to get that one through. Vikings in transition. Barrett thought about the three. Open corner, knocks it down. Seven points in the game for Barrett. Great job by Elizabeth City State, scoring off of a turnover. That's what we talked about earlier with Big Bob. You're going to leave him open for three. He has been working on extending his range. And I think one of the one of the most important things about that shot was no hesitation. Work on it, get into the game, and let it fly. Three-point shootout as Daniels hits one. He's got five. For Baycott, he shot just one three-pointer in his first two years here at Carolina. It was last year. He did not make it, by the way, as Hobbs through some contact and in transition gets it to go. Here's Harris the other way. Love to Walton. Pump fake. Steps inside the three-point line and will give it up. Harris tried to save it. I'll get it. Here we go. <laughs> Take another look at this three from Baycott. One, I like that he shot it straight away. And two, kind of trailing the play here. Exactly. Perfect in rhythm. Again, no hesitation. He's got a great looking shot. Team high, 16 points, seven rebounds for Baycott. Led the Tar Heels in both of those categories last season. Hesitation from the three-point line. Daniels going to get called for the charge. Manic had the position. Great job by Brady Manic there. Getting his feet set, putting his body on the line for his team. Senior Daniels. A Greenville, a little bit out of control. Great job, great form, great form. Vikings took care of the ball pretty well in the first half, just seven turnovers, already with four here in the second half. Back down to Garcia, gets his defender in the air. He'll try and get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Great, strong finish by Dawson Garcia. Also, great pass by a fellow big, Brady Manning. Garcia averaged 13 points last year as a freshman. Ended up being named to the Big East All-Freshman team for the Golden Eagles. He's got 17 now. Five of five from the free, uh, free throw line. So five rebounds. And he's done it with a great percentage tonight. Been very efficient. Pilate working against Manic. He's going to get the block. And that'll go out of bounds. Last touch by Hobbs and the Vikings. Second block of the game for Manic. We don't... We don't think about Brady Manning as the most athletic player out here, but he's done a great job getting to some balls and getting some blocks. Love drew the defense. Garcia couldn't handle the pass, and Tar Heels turn it over. Yeah. 
Barrett steps back, leaves it short. Off the front iron, Love with the rebound. Carolina with numbers in transition. Bounce pass for Garcia is knocked away though. Back-to-back -back turnovers from the Tar Heels. And the Vikings are gonna give it right back as Page, the freshman, loses the dribble. A little sloppy here the last couple of minutes, but Carolina with a 24-point lead as we go to the break. With Ring Alarm, when someone broke into my house, before I could do anything, I got a call from Ring. This is Jordan with Ring Alarm Monitoring. I'll send the police right over. Ring helped save my house from a break-in. Shop holiday deals this season at ring.com. Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. Challenging early schedule for North Carolina, but that's kind of what Hubert Davis wants. He wants to test his team in the early goings to kind of figure out what they are and where they're at and get a measuring stick. I think it's extremely important to get those, those tests early. Really kind of get a gauge for where your team is and, and knowing that you're going to have to win some big time games getting into, you know, later into the season and, and into March. And so this is a great time to, to test your team. That Michigan game, part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge, the UCLA one the CBS Sports Classic that'll take place in Las Vegas. Harris finds Walton near side for three. Off the iron, offensive rebound to Manic. It's knocked out of bounds and will stay with the heel. Manic doesn't come down with that rebound, but him attacking the glass and going for that ball gives them the ball back, gives them a second chance. Anthony Harris, the red shirt sophomore with good court vision to find Walton in the corner that defense moving. It was interesting when we were talking with Sean Walker, who's the head coach for Elizabeth City State. He brought up Anthony Harris because he knows him pretty well. Anthony's dad is an alum of the Vikings. Yeah. Manic underneath. And we, we even heard that maybe could be getting a bid into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he was part of the uh, 97 team for the Vikings that made it all the way to the Elite Eight. Coach Walker told us he gave his Anthony Harris, his dad, a little bit of a hard time. He said, I know your son's in Carolina blue, but I better see you in Viking blue. That's a tough choice. That's a tough decision to have to make. Hopefully he found a way to, to, to show homage to both schools. Said he was looking for one of those, those split jerseys. Those half and half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coach Walker telling us he was excited because there's a couple of Tar Heels that he, he's familiar with. And uh, Armando Baycott, another one who was on an AAU team with his son when they were in high school. It's amazing how small this, this basketball world really is. A lot of these guys grew up playing against each other, with each other. Coach Walker, a busy man. We sat down with him yesterday. He had just gotten to Chapel Hill, flying back from Georgia, because he went down there to go watch his son on an off day. Step back three, a little bit off the mark. Rebounded, though, by Bellotti at the free throw line. Fresh shot clock. Strong on that three, rebounded near side by McCoy. Harris finds McCoy in transition. Manic. Off the three point line, gonna get his own rebound, can't put it back. Second time, has it knocked away, and Carolina will keep possession. But the big man shows that he can put it on the floor and, and, and attack the basket as well. Coach Walker want to chat some things over. We'll call his second time out here of this half. You know, when we talked with him, they're a D2 school. He said, there's no question about it. We're coming in here just to kind of figure out what we have. We're not coming in thinking that we're the same level in North Carolina, but we're not going to back down from them either. And they have it, even though down by 26, they've played a tough game here tonight. They have, and honestly, North Carolina is going to be able to take a lot away from this game. Elizabeth City State has, has done a great job of, of putting as much pressure as they can on this North Carolina uh, basketball team, but I think that they should be proud of, of their effort tonight so far. Not the only opportunity for the Vikings to be on a national stage this season either. Told us that the CIAA tournament has signed a deal and that conference tournament will be carried by ESPN, which he was really excited about, wanted everybody to know because up until recently with conference realignment, that was the second biggest tournament in college basketball only to the ACC. 
Wow, didn't know that. But that's just a great opportunity for these kids to, to be seen and for them to play on a on a bigger stage. Here's Charles Page, the 6'4 freshman out of Fayetteville. Lottie Page, Shawami Barrett, and Adams out there for Elizabeth City State. Harris, Davis, Garcia, McCoy, and Manick for the Tar Heels. Lottie into some traffic, can't finish. And Harris comes away with a loose ball rebound. And will try and finish with the left, but draw the foul. Tar Heels continue to do a great job of forcing Elizabeth City State into tough shots. As the referee was going up the court, he was given the bobble sign, never had possession. That's why there was no whistle. Page called on the reach in. Harris last year, 53% free throw shooter. Averaged about 11 minutes a game for the Tar Heels off the bench. I'm sure this is no surprise, but of course, I know Ant Harris more than anybody wants to make sure that, that number goes up. Easy way to put some points on the board. Can't get the second as Manic will be whistled for the over the back. That's the second foul against Manic. Carolina, which I know this will make Coach Davis happy. 22 of 27 from the free throw line tonight. Absolutely. You know, when I was here with Coach Williams, we always wanted to make more free throws than the other team attempted. And uh, they were well on their way to, to keeping that in line for this evening. Harris looking for Garcia, a little bit strong on that oop attempt. Threw it off the backboard. And a goal 10 there. Manic a little bit late looking for his third block of the game. Got eight in the game. Again, great change of pace. Attacking downhill, finishing at the rim. It's a beautiful play by RJ Davis. Davis with eight points on three of six shooting. Also has four assists as Manic comes away with a steal. Coy finds Davis who will pull up. Oh, oh, he's got great decision and transition. In rhythm, great pull-up shot. Davis last year had a season high of 19. That came in the ACC tournament against Virginia Tech. Talking about Anthony Harris's dad, how about R.J. Davis's father? 2,118 points at Mercy. That was without a three-point line. Wow. Take a look at the last couple of back at, uh, baskets here from the sophomore. Beautiful sidestep move there. And just an easy one-two pull up in transition. Smooth, in rhythm. Great shot. Four Tar Heels in double digit scoring. Davis, Baycott, Garcia, and Manick. Rob's the only double-digit scorer so far for the Elizabeth City State Vikings. He's got 10. Baycott using his size and strength to get the shot off, but can't get it to go. Back the other way, Bellotti loses it out of bounds. 13 turnovers now for the Vikings as that bug starts to rear its head. 
We'll be right back here in Chapel Hill. Whoa. Every week, millions of fantasy football players need to be confident they're making the right decision. What's up with CeeDee Lamb? How does ESPN help them make smarter trades and set the right lineup? Does this look bad? I don't know. I'm not that kind of doctor. IBM Watson. By analyzing everything from player stats to expert opinions, Watson cuts through the noise to deliver game-changing insights. Boomer Bust says C.D. Lamb is going to boom. To keep ESPN at the top of the fantasy sports world. He's good. What can Watson do for your business? The ancient Greeks had four words for love. The most admirable is called agape. Love as an action. For 175 years, New York Life has been helping people act okay. on their love. So they can look back or look ahead and say, we got it right. We did good. The three bigs for North Carolina, not just doing it in the paint, but also out beyond the yard. Look at what all three of them have combined to be able to do so far for the Tar Heels tonight. I think these big men have had a great show in this evening, scoring in a variety of different ways. But again, just taking that responsibility to, to be big time players for this team. 46 combined points, 17 rebounds for those three. Love Davis, Garcia, McCoy, and Baycott out there right now for Carolina. Hobbs, Fisher, Daniels, Kirkendall, and Wilkins for the Vikings. Baycott on the baseline, finds Davis open. Lob that one up for Garcia, who never went to get it. Davis says I'll take care of it and get a little finger roll. Not the way that he planned that, but it worked out in the end. Six points for Davis in the last couple of minutes. He's up to a dozen in the game. McCoy going to be whistled for the foul. Grab the junior Gabe Kirkendall. It was interesting when we talked with Coach Walker and he was telling us about all the guys on the team. When he got to Kirkendall, he said, he's a good basketball player, but he's even better off the court. He is such a good person that you almost, too good to be to, to be true, type of guy you want your daughter to bring home. I think that's probably the highest praise you can get. Absolutely. It's not going to necessarily help put points on the board, but obviously you want to be a, a, a great person before a great player. That we saw there on that shot by Caleb Love again. Just the confidence. Love into double digits with 10 points. Four rebounds and five assists for the sophomore guard tonight. Take another look at this pull up here from Davis. Draws the defense and then kicks it out. That's something that Coach Davis loves. Attack the paint, get it inside first, kick it out for the three. He has been pushing the pace all night long. One of the takeaways for me by the time this one's over is going to be how fast he has been able to get Carolina up and into the offensive sets. And sometimes that's going to look like R.J. Davis scoring in transition, but a lot of times that's going to look like kickouts, dump downs, for guys to get good looks. Love getting to double digits makes it five Tar Heels tonight. Talked about that in the first half. It's been a nice even scoring attack for North Carolina. A little pop from the crowd as the two freshmen announced for the Tar Heels. They'll check in for the first time tonight. Dontrez Styles, a 6'6 freshman from Kinston, North Carolina. DeMarco Dunn, 6'4 freshman out of Tucson, Arizona. I think the Tar Heel fans can be excited about both these freshmen. These two have an incredible amount of upside, incredible amount of potential. 
And I think they're going to fit in just, just right with this North Carolina Tar Heel team. With those freshmen, I think Tar Heel fans will recognize Styles' hometown, Kinston, North Carolina. A couple of Carolina greats from that area. Reggie Bullock most recently, and Jerry Stackhouse, by the way, Happy birthday to happy, Jerry. Happy birthday, Stack. Crowd wants that one to count as Manic finishes the circus shop at the whistle came on the floor. And Kyle, I don't know if you saw this, but Dontre Styles on that rebound had his head clear above the rim. <laughs> and I think that that's something that has stood out to me more than anything is just his size, his athleticism, um, super excited to see what he's going to be able to do this season with the Tar Heels. Both of us had that reaction of the grabbing each other and going, oh, in warm-ups because of the show he was putting on dunking. But there's a lot of excitement about that freshman. Take a look at how high he got here. <laughs> you a little surprised that it's taken this long to get the freshman into this game, or do you think it's more of there are a lot of veterans in a really deep lineup for Hubert Davis this year. I mean, I, part of me thinks, you know, this is crazy that it's taken so long, but the other side of me understands completely, to your point, there's a lot of guys in front of them that, that are going to be able to, to really contribute, and they're just going to have to wait their turn and be ready to be a positive influence when they're on the court. Manic misses the front end of the one and one. He's four, from seven, or four of seven from the free throw line tonight. Looking at the numbers for those two freshmen, especially Styles, averaged just over 30 points and 10 rebounds for his senior season. Just before the game, I had to ask to make sure that that was right. <laughs> Hobbs, who was hot in the first half, gets his first bucket of the second here, corner three. He's had a great showing tonight. He's worked super hard for his baskets, but he's definitely earned them. Corey tried to kick that one out to Dunn in the corner. Instead, going to be whistled for the offensive foul. A little bit out of control there. It's a good idea, but you just got to be under control with the ball there. Make a better play. Dunn, the other freshman that Hubert Davis brought in this season, had some pretty gaudy uh, numbers his senior season. 23 and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, two and a half assists a game. I don't know too much about DeMarco, but again, you're here wearing Carolina blue. You got Coach Huber Davis behind you, believing in you. We got to expect that we're going to see some good things from him in the future. Back to back threes for Hobbs. Nine triples in the game for the Vikings. Boy dribbles that one off his feet. Ant, uh, Ant Harris comes up with it, kicks to the corner for Manic. Wide open team is good. That play started off a little broken, but Ant Harris was able to pick that thing up and, and make something out of it. Brady Manic knocking down another three. 16 in the game for Manic, ninth three made for the Tar Heels. Shooting 45% from deep. As Manic comes up with a block on Shawanmi. Is that Brady's third block of the game? His third block of the game. Here's Styles for three, a little bit strong. Rebounded by Hobbs. And get a whistle underneath. That's going to go against Shawanmi. That will send us to the break. North Carolina with a 29 point lead here in Chapel Hill. Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, the underdogs. It means constantly improving, striving, hungry. It's no excuses, no days off, or no glory. It's Drive. With insurance from auto owners, you can relax knowing we got you covered. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. I should do this for a living.
earlier today, North Carolina announcing the team elected captains, and I don't think any surprise Armando Baycott is one of them, but RJ Davis and Caleb Love, it's a bit of a surprise because only one other sophomore has ever been a captain for a North Carolina Tar Heel team, at least in the modern era. That was Marcus Page. Well, let me tell you, if RJ Davis and Caleb Love can follow in the footsteps of Marcus Page, North Carolina will be in, in, in good hands. But I think that the team has shown their support, and they know that these two guys, these sophomores, are going to be great leaders for them. And I think that they're, they're primed for it. They're ready for it. Out of the timeout, Harris Black, Styles, Dunn, McCoy out there for North Carolina. Dunn pulls up from the mid-range, can't get it to go. McCoy on the rebound, a little bit soft. Loose ball, Styles will track it down. Fresh 20 for the heels. Black is going to be fouled. Anthony Dudu, the freshman, reaching in there. Leakey has had a leaky type game for North Carolina. Just two points so far, but five or seven rebounds, excuse me, a couple of them on the offensive glass. He's also added in a couple of assists for Carolina. He's a player that can do a little bit of everything. But I personally would love to see him just be a little more assertive, even if it's just rebounding the basketball. I think he's a guy that could easily get 10 rebounds a game. Average five rebounds and six points last year for Carolina as a junior. Hobbs, Bilotti, Wright, Dudu, and Adams for the Vikings. with the put back. He's got four. And Bilotti's another guy that's really been leaving it all out on the floor here. Hasn't shown on the scoreboard. But he can be proud about the effort that he's put out here on the court. Coach Walker told us he is a tough kid. Aaron Gibson, sophomore out of Plymouth, North Carolina. Off the front iron rebounded by Styles. McCoy for three. A little bit off the mark. Carolina 0 for their last four. One pass and a three-point shot, I'm sure, is not what Coach Davis wants to see either. to pick up the dribble, find Pilati. Going to go baseline with the reverse, and he'll look for a three-point play. And there's Mr. Bilotti again. It's around McCoy Styles there as well. I think they're going to hit McCoy with that foul. Points looking for seven and nine rebounds to go along with five assists tonight for Bilotti. At the mark. Just the third free throw of the game taken by Elizabeth City State. One for three from the charity strike. This forces up a shot. Heels kick off the regular season on Tuesday with Loyola coming here to Chapel Hill. It will officially be the first game as the head coach for Hubert Davis as the Tar Heels force a shot clock violation here. Great job by the Tar Heels. Staying tough on defense. Getting a shot clock violation. 30 seconds is a long time to play defense.
Couple of teams led by former players that know what it means to wear the uniform. Styles skies to get the rebound over everybody and the putback. Oh, there you go right there. There's that athleticism that I was talking about. High energy, athleticism. He's gonna find himself in some good positions. Just using those two things. He wasn't on the floor for very long. Jump touched and jumped right back up. He's on a trampoline. Take a look at this one again. Gets the rebound. And this is in traffic. This is around two or three defenders. It's a big time play by the freshman. Coach Davis will empty the bench now for the Tar Heels. Crowd gives the five on the court. An ovation as they go to the bench. McAdoo kicks it into the corner for Landry. His three off the mark. McAdoo with the rebound. Has it ripped away, though. Shot clock turned off. The Vikings can hold if they want. Barrett going to take the three. Nothing but iron. Creighton Lebo across midcourt. Jackson, uh, Jackson Watkins, the other one on for the Tar Heels, along with Dewey Ferris. Final shot of the game from Gibson off the mark. And that will wrap up this exhibition. Both teams now only have the regular season to look forward to. What is the takeaway for you having now seen Carolina against a team in a different uniform? Well, I don't think there's anything surprising tonight. I think that we saw some great backcourt play from the guards at, at North Carolina. I think that we've seen our older players, Brady Manick, Armando Baycott, really get, really get going. Even uh, Dawson Garcia had a great showing tonight. So I think those are the usual suspects, things that we're going to continue to see throughout this season. Hubert Davis era will kick off Tuesday night here in Chapel Hill. Tonight, Garcia led the way with 17 points. Baycott with 16, as well as Manic. The Bigs feeding all night long for the Tar Heels as they take the 81-54 win. For Marcus Ginyard, I'm Kyle Straub saying so long and have a good night.